a little bit of a mess to go, but can you hear me? Let me know if you can. No, I'm talking to those on Facebook. Amen. Praise the Lord to those that are joining on the Facebook Live. If you can hear me, give me a thumbs up, a heart, or something. Hey, gentlemen, if you guys that. Praise the Lord, Uncle Dean. On the prayer line, can you please mute your phone? I'm hearing a lot of static. I have a lot of noise. Praise the Lord, Sister Angie. You can barely hear me. Okay, let me see. If I turn up the volume, can you hear me now? I sing pretty loud to myself, so. You can barely. How about now? Is that How does that sound? Does that sound better? Sister Josette. I want you to barely hear me. I want you to hear me if you can. Praise the Lord. Sister Dolores. Okay, you can hear me now. All right. I was trying to not um, be this close to the microphone, but I guess I have to be so you can really hear me. All right. We're going to go ahead and get started. If you can. And uh, hopefully uh, more people will join us as we keep we go. I want to start off with a little prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, O oh God, for allowing us to be here on today. God, we thank you, O oh God, for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. God, we thank you, O oh God, just for allowing us to be a vessel being used by you on today, O oh God. Lord, we're asking that you would help me to decrease and that you may increase, O oh God, and let the word go forth, O oh God, that it would be edifying to the people of God in the name of Jesus. God, let it help someone that is in need. Let it help someone who is going through a struggle or a trial in their life on today, O oh God. Let them know that they can lean and trust on you today, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, there is no problem too hard for you to fix. There is no problem too big for you to solve. And God, we're asking that you would just help us, O oh God, to uh, speak your word, O oh God, in truth and in love on tonight, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And God, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. How about now? Is it a little bit louder? I know. I have a soft voice anyway, so uh, I know that it, uh, when I get excited, I'll probably get a little bit louder, but um, right now, I hope that it is loud enough for everyone. Amen. I'm uh, First Lady Nikia Deary from Zion Church in Jesus Christ. Um, the pastor is my husband, um, District Elder Bobby Deary, and tonight, um, I have the pleasure of um, teaching Bible study again. <laughs> Amen. Um, we truly thank God for the opportunity. Uh, we do not take it lightly to uh, be able to teach the people of God. Um, uh, I thank God. I don't know why this always happens to me, but for whatever reason, every time I have to teach Bible study, and I guess I don't pay attention to the dates um, in which I am supposed to teach Bible study, I guess I just don't pay attention, or either the Lord doesn't want me to pay attention when I agree to these dates to teach. But um, uh, last time in September I taught, and I taught on the anniversary of my aunt's death, and then today is the anniversary of my grandmother's death um, two years ago. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm teaching again. And I didn't even realize that I was teaching again on a day uh, that was very um, significant to me. And um, man, I can remember like it was yesterday. I can't even believe it was two years, but I can remember like it was yesterday uh, that it, when it happened and where I was and what was going on and, and, and watching the whole event that occurred. And so nevertheless, we are here. In the name of Jesus, and with the help of the Lord, we shall get through this lesson. I know that I have been teaching um, for a while on, um, you know, not giving up, don't give up, don't quit. And then the last time that I preached in um, January, the last Sunday I preached, you had to go through it. I want to keep in that same kind of vein, if you don't mind, um, just dealing with um, some things I was studying and asking the Lord to kind of help me to see what, what I should teach and, and where I should go. And, and I really was 
really all over the place with this lesson. I didn't even know what to do, where to go. And, and then the Lord gave me these two women that didn't seem like they went together at all to teach on. I just didn't feel like they, I'm like, why these two women? They don't even seem like they match, but uh, that they even go together, really. But we want to still um, stick in the same vein and, and, and talk about what what we believe the Lord has placed on our heart. Um, because we still are in trying times. We still are in difficult times. We still are, everyone is still kind of going through some things. Um, I can even say for myself, you know, I have been going through some things. I have been going through some struggles and some, some issues myself and um, trying to um, work through them. Um, trying to uh, ask God for his guidance and his help. And, and really, um, it's a struggle. Listen, it's a struggle when you really know uh, what you are um, taught to do in the word of God. Um, what you are supposed to do based on the word of God. And you find that yourself sometimes is in a, a struggle trying to f fulfill or to do what the Word of God tells you to do or shows you to do. And so, if I can be honest and transparent and say that I struggle with things, you know, because once, I'm, I am human, hello, I am, um, I may be a uh, first lady or minister, whatever you want to call it, but the truth is I'm human and the truth is I got feelings. Imagine that. Hmm, I do. Um, and so sometimes it can be hard and it can be a struggle um, to really um, deal with the pressures and the trials that come with life. Um, and so when my husband talked last week on Count It All Joy, I thought, wow, he maybe he was speaking that to me. He didn't have to teach it on Bible study. He could have just taught me at home and didn't have to teach nobody else. But I thought the message was for me. But you know, um, because we do have to count it all joy. And through the trials and the tribulations that we do go through, that um, it is to make us stronger and to help us to go through and to understand that we need to trust in the Lord. And so tonight I want to talk about that just a little bit about trusting in God um, and, and trusting in Him. Um, and I'm going to try to do it with these two women that the Lord told me to talk about. Hopefully I get through both of them. I may only get through one. We'll see. But we're going to try to go ahead and do this because, um, again, if I ain't teaching it to nobody self, to no one else, I'm going to teach it to myself. If that's all right, that's how I say it when I'm preaching. If I pre ain't preaching to nobody, I'm going to preach to myself. Amen. And if you get blessed, then you get blessed. But I'm going to preach to myself on today. Amen. Teach to myself anyway. And I want to start with 1 Peter 5 and 7. And it just simply says, um, casting all your cares upon him for he careth for you. And what we're talking about is we're casting all of our cares on the Lord because he cares for us. We understand that there are issues and there are problems and, and that stuff is going to come. We understand that um, when we get saved, I think I was showing, preached on this on Sunday, that when we get saved, um, some people have the misconception of believing that everything is going to be good and great and, and wonderful and it's going to be just so amazing and you're just going to be so happy, joy, joy, joy all the time. Not to say that you shouldn't be. You should have the joy of the Lord all the time. However, we understand, as I said earlier, we're human. We have emotions. We have feelings. We have things that, that come upon us that, that can cause us to get discouraged. It can cause us to become um, angry or we can become upset or we can, you know, there's so many different emotions that, that we are fixed with that causes us to um, then question, you know, God and then question why we're here, question what we're doing, question what's going on. And so... I just want to kind of bring you some encouragement today along with myself that we want to be able to just cast our cares on the Lord on today. We want to be able to give him whatever our problem is, whatever our situation is, whatever is holding us bondage or whatever has us bound, whatever has us in a, a state of despair, a, a state of unknowing, a state of not um, uh, knowing what to do, how to do, where to turn, where to go, whatever. It is just... Um, I want, I want to be able to, to help us get navigate through that. And I'm going to use the example of these women. Um, I don't know who's on the prayer line, but if you can mute your phone, someone on the prayer line has a whole lot of static going on. So if you can mute your phone on the prayer line, I would really appreciate it. All right, so we're going to try to jump in here. And again, we started with, I just quoted the one scripture, 1 Peter 5 and 7. If I keep looking to the side, it's going to have my notes on both sides of me. And it just says, casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. So when I was um, praying in 
I'm thinking, God, I, these two women, I, I've preached on them before and talked to them or talked about them before, but um, the first one I want to talk about is the woman with the issue of blood. And it's in it's found in um, actually all the Gospels, but we're going to read the one in Mark because that seems to be the one that has the most detail of it all. So in Mark chapter number 5, verse number 25, I'm going to read it in your hearing. But if you have it, you can um, read it as well. And it says, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was no, nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, and touched his garment. For she said, I, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her, that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. And I know this is a very familiar passage of scriptures. I mean, praise the Lord, I was shouting, yes, the state of the unknown. Listen, we live that. I walk that. I'm, I don't know if anybody else is walking it, but listen, I'm walking in that unknown. Um, but we, this is a very familiar passage of scripture. And so it, it really goes along with the, the theme and, and things that I've been talking about and things that I've been studying. Is that um, this woman, she had a issue of blood for 12 years. And 12 years is a very long time, um, 12 years is a very long time, my God, to have a sickness, um, let alone to be bleeding for 12 years, almost hemorrhaging. I, I probably can say a lot of women can understand this concept of bleeding and probably would not want to uh, deal with that for 12 years, especially if it was nonstop. Listen, come on, people. I don't think any woman would want to deal with that for bleeding for 12 years nonstop. Lord have mercy. I think we would probably lose it. It would be a problem because I think most women don't want to even bleed for the time that they have every month. I'm just saying. Uh, most people are trying to get rid of that and don't want to deal with it. And so here we have this woman who was dealing with this state of, uh, of a issue. She had an issue. She had a problem. She had something that was causing her to be uh, discouraged, whether it would be in her body, um, which was in her body, also in her mind, her state of being. Um, the fact that because she was bleeding, she was considered unclean. And we can go back um, in the Old Testament and we can talk about uncleanness and how a woman was not supposed to be around anyone during that time because she was considered unclean. And so it caused some things for this woman to have to deal with, whether it be isolation, to be alone, um, to not be around anybody, to make her have to deal with herself. And sometimes dealing with ourselves when we're by ourselves is probably a little bit too much for most of us, okay? But she had to be alone. She had to deal with herself. And then the, the, the craziest part about it is she was trying to seek help from others from doctors. It says that it tells us here that she had suffered many things of many physicians, which means I believe that it means that many people, doctors or physicians or who have you, have tried to help this woman. They tried to help her with her problem. They tried to help rectify the issue. They tried to um, stop the bleeding. They tried to do something to help her. And the craziest thing is, I think that's what a lot of us do, is that we try to fix our issue and our problem on our own. I'm not, I'm not going to talk about you. Let's talk about me. 
a lot of times I try to fix my issue or the problem that I have on my own. Again, I told you I'm going to preach to my teach to myself today because I try to fix what's broken in me. I try to fix whatever is causing me pain or whatever is causing me hurt or whatever is causing me. I try to fix it as this woman was trying to go to people, even though they probably specialized in the area, they were trying to fix something that was broken in hers and they could not. We cannot fix what is broken in us and some things physicians and doctors and counselors and people of that such cannot fix what is broken in you because it is not a natural matter it's a spiritual matter that needs to be dealt with spiritually and so sometimes I think we get confused as to what is natural and what is spiritual and this woman went through the the natural remedies of trying to go to the physician, trying to go to the people who she thought can help her, trying to go to all these things, spending all of her money and doing all these things to get her where she needs to be, where she thinks she needs to be, not realizing it's a spiritual matter and not a matter that just any old person can fix. I thought I said something for myself. I'm talking to you serious. It's a spiritual matter that only God can fix to myself. Listen, so she was trying to do all these things and spent all that she had. And and it says that even when she was doing all of that, what happened? It says the more that she went to the people to try to help her, she got worse. Oh, my Jesus. And so she was going to the people who she thought was going to give her the remedy to the solution. Hmm thought they was going to give her the room to the solution and found out that that instead of making her better she got worse sometimes what we do is instead of us making the problem better that it started off okay but then we start putting our hand in it and we start asking other people to come in and help we start asking people to do this and we start paying people to do that and try to get this done and we found out that we made it worse than it started out with because the number one reason is we try to do and go to people who God didn't tell us to go to. That's one. Two, we try to uh, think that someone has the knowledge or the capability to do something to fix a matter that is not a natural thing, but a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual matter in which we have to take hold of, right? We know that the Bible tells us that for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? The Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and spiritual weakness in high places. And so we have to understand that sometimes what we're dealing with and we're going through is not a natural thing. It's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual hope. It's a spiritual war that is going on, a spiritual struggle that is going on. And we're trying to use natural remedies to fix a spiritual battle. We can't, you cannot fight this battle with natural hands, physical hands, physical, putting your physical hand on somebody, wrapping it around their neck. Listen, this is not a natural battle that we are fighting. It is a, it's a spiritual battle in which we are fighting. And so therefore, the only way we can fight spiritual things is with, with the Spirit of God, with the Holy Ghost, with Jesus himself. He is the only one who can help us with the spiritual things that we need to fight with, right? The Bible tells us in Ephesians to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to withstand, stand against the wiles of the enemy, to put on the whole armor of God so that we can stand. Again, it's a spiritual battle in which we're fighting. It's a spiritual war that is going on. And a lot of times, even with ourselves, our physical body, our fleshly body is struggling with the spirit. I can speak to that because even for myself, my physical, my fleshly self, listen, this flesh that this girl right here got is a problem because this flesh wants to do what it want to do. And I'm going to tell you, I struggle with this flesh and in the spirit because the spirit man is telling me, kid, let it go. The flesh is saying, don't let it go. Hold on. You got it right. The spirit is saying, kid, let it go. And my fleshly self is saying, kid, keep it. Keep it. You got it right. You got it right. And the spirit is saying, let it go. I didn't told you to let it go. And I'm saying, no, Jesus, I'm going to hold this. No, Jesus said, I got this. And he said, no. And I'm still saying, no, no, no. I want to do what I want to do. And the, and the Jesus and the spirit is telling me, you know better. And I 
still want to fight and struggle because I want to hold on. I want to say, I got a right to be mad. I got a right to be angry. I got a right to be in my feelings, which I probably do have every right to do that. But the spiritual side won't allow me to stay there. It shouldn't allow me to stay there. But as long as I struggle, as long as I struggle with myself, I want to let the flesh take over instead of letting the spirit man take over. And so we have to understand it's a spiritual thing that we're dealing with. And so this woman, she was going and she got worse. It got worse. And so sometimes if we allow our natural self to try to fix something, that Jesus is, that it's not a natural thing and it's a spiritual thing, then it can get worse before it gets better. A lot of times we start to pray. And we're asking God to do a thing. We're saying, God, do this. God, do that. God, I'm asking you to show up into the midst of the fire with me. I'm asking you to show up in this situation. I'm asking you to show up in the midst of this relationship. I'm asking you to show up in my marriage. I'm asking you to show up in my children's lives. I'm asking you to show up in this, in whatever it is that you have going on. God, I'm asking you to show up in my sickness. I'm asking you to show up. And you're praying and you're praying and you're asking God to show up and you're asking God to heal. You're asking God to deliver. You're asking God to set you free. You're asking God to, to take out the brokenness, to repair you, to restore you. You're asking God to do all these things for you. And yet it doesn't seem like anything is happening, but it seems like instead of it getting better, it seems like, you know what, it's just getting worse. It seems like, you know, the more that I pray, the more problems come up. The more that I pray, the more I think about this stuff. The more that I pray, the more it seems like I'm in pain. The more that I pray, the hurt, the more hurt that I feel. The more that I pray, sometimes the, key, the tears won't stop flowing. The more that I pray, I feel like really bad. The more that I pray, I feel like it's just, it's just not getting any better for me. I I feel like I'm not going anywhere. I feel like my prayers are not going anywhere. I feel like I'm just in a place, as uh, as Elder Sheldon said earlier, as in the unknown. I just don't feel like Jesus is here. I just don't feel like he's hearing me. I just don't feel like I don't even know what to do. I've asked him and he hasn't answered. I've asked him and he hasn't shown up, but everything seems to get worse and worse. I seem to get further and further away from God. I get further and further away from where he's trying me to go. And so but but again, we're looking at it naturally. And we're not taking in consideration that it's a spiritual thing. We're not taking in consideration that it's a spiritual matter. And that these things, a lot of these things come out by fasting and prayer. And so this woman, she knew she grew worse. And then she heard. And so here's what I want you to do today and understand tonight. Is that you are hearing the word of God. This woman heard about Jesus. She heard, it says, when she heard of Jesus. She heard about Jesus. She heard about his miracles. She heard about what he had done. She heard about him. She only heard. Sometimes what we hear can help us get through what we're going through. Just to know that Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you always, even until the end. Just to know that should be enough. But she heard. Jesus about him what have you heard about Jesus have you heard that he is a deliverer that you, have you heard that he is a way maker have you heard that he is um, a wheel in the middle of a wheel have you heard that he has came to give you life and that more abundantly have you heard that there is nothing too hard for him have you heard that with him all things are possible have you heard about Jesus and once she heard about Jesus, she said something that was profound. She said, if I may touch, but his clothes, or other translation says his garment. She heard about him. Mm. And it's so crazy that I'm teaching this because the Lord told me that the other week. Oh, my Lord Jesus. It's just coming to me. He said... You heard it, you seen it, now do it. Oh my Lord Jesus. And so here we are. This woman, she heard the word. And she heard it, and then she said, I'm going to go see 
Jeez. Oh. And then she said, if I may but touch. So she went and she did something. Oh. She went and she did something. And what she did, I told you I'm bringing to myself. I'm talking to myself because I just got a whole revelation just that quick, real quick. What she did was she heard it and then she went and did what she heard about. And she knew she she didn't even need to have a conversation with Jesus, okay? She didn't have a conversation. She didn't need to have a conversation with him. All she said is, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I don't even need to touch his body. I don't need to, I just need to touch the piece of his garment that he's wearing, the bottom of his garment that he's wearing. And I believe that I will be made whole. She just believed. I just need to touch believing it believing having hope not getting discouraged believing it and so she did just that she went through the crowd she came out of isolation and knowing that she wasn't even supposed to be there she came out of isolation she came out of where she was and she de she decided i'm going to get into this crowd and i'm going to push my way through until i get to jesus and that is exactly what she did she pushed her way through and then she touched the hem of his garment whether she was on the ground and she had to be on the ground because i don't think she can touch the hem with the bottom if she was standing up so she had to be down on the ground and she had to touch him down on the bottom but the craziest part is jesus knew he touched she touched him and the reason why is because he turned around and said, who touched me? Because he knew that the virtue had went out. He knew something had came off of him into somebody else. He knew. And so here you have this woman who was suffering from something for 12 years. Can you imagine suffering from something for 12 years? Can you imagine dealing with the heartache and the pain of uh things for 12 years listen some people have done it longer than that can you imagine being in a relationship with somebody for 12 years or longer and ain't nothing changed and it just seems like it's getting worse and worse and worse and they ain't getting no better or you ain't getting no better and nobody getting no better it's just getting worse and worse and worse and you like lord when you gonna show up lord when you gonna come in and understanding that it's not even actually it's probably not even a physical matter or a, a that's going on it's a spiritual matter that's going on that's why you and your husband can't get along because it's a spiritual battle that's going on that's why you and your children can't get along because it's a spiritual battle that's going on and we're trying to solve these things with the natural mind and the natural eye with the natural things not knowing that it's a spiritual thing it's a spiritual battle it's a spiritual thing that we need to and we need to take it to jesus i told you earlier we need to cast all of our cares upon the lord our anxieties our worries our indifferences or whatever it is we need to take them and we need to cast them on the lord because he cares for us because he's the problem solver he's the fixer he's the regulator he's the healer he's the provider he's the one it's not us it's not of our own it's not a, nothing we can do we can't fix anything. We can't fix anybody. I wish I could. I wish, I, I really wish I could fix people. I really wish I could um, make people change their minds. I wish I could make people change their hearts. I wish I could make people do right, talk right, be right, live right, all those things. I really wish I could. But listen, it's hard enough trying to get me to stay in line with the word of God. It's hard to get me to stay in line with the will of God. How can I get somebody else to do it? You have to want to do this thing for yourself. You have to really want God for yourself. You have to really understand that this is a spiritual thing and you really have to say, you know what, God, I'm going to walk through this. God, I'm going to do this. God, I'm going to trust you in the process. God, I'm not going to allow myself to get caught up and discouraged and, and thinking about what's going on and what's happening in my life. God, I'm not going to get myself to focus on all the negativity and the bad things. God, instead, I'm going to focus, focus on your word. I'm going to focus on what you've called me to do. I'm going to focus on what, who you called me to be. I'm going to focus on those things instead of focusing on the negative and then God I'm going to understand that I'm not wrestling against the flesh and blood I'm not wrestling against that I understand that I'm wrestling against uh, spiritual weaknesses and principalities in high places so I understand I recognize who I'm fighting I understand the battle that I'm fighting I understand the situation that's going on and once we can see and understand the spiritual battle that is going on then we can really take it to Jesus and leave it there but until then we can't till we recognize that Jesus is the one that can fix it Jesus is the one that can heal us Jesus is the one who can actually lift us up out of that pit and the mire and the clay and the muck he can one that pick us 
up. He can want, he's the one that can turn us around. He's the one that can change our life. He's the one that can change our way of thinking. He's the one that can help us to keep our minds stayed on him. He's the one. Jesus is the one. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the light. It's Jesus. We can't do this of our own will. We can't do this of our own. We cannot do it by ourselves. We have to have the spirit of God down on the inside of us. We have to be able to trust the spirit of God. We have to be able to trust God. We have to be able to put everything in God's hands and not lean to our own understanding, but we need to trust in the Lord. Right? That's what um, Proverbs 3 and 5 says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Right? And lean not into our own understanding. We can't get so caught up in what we want and how we want and how we expect it to be, what we expect it to look like, how we sh how we expect it to feel, all these things, we can't get caught up on that stuff because a lot of that stuff is not going to work how we want it to work. It's not going to look how we want it to look. It's not even going to feel how we want it to feel. Listen, because if it did, then we would be in such a better place than where we are. But the truth is, a lot of times we're going to feel hurt. We're going to feel pain. We're going to be broken. We're going to have some issues. We're going to have some things. But it's about once you know that you're broken, once you know you need healing, once you know you have a problem, once you know you have an issue, then it's about what are you going to do with that? Where are you going to take it? Are you going to keep taking it to everybody else outside of God? Or are you going to learn to take it to Jesus? Because if we keep taking it to people who are outside of God, who don't have the mind of God, right? Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. If we're taking it to people who do not have the mind of God, who do not love God, who do not know God, who do not serve God, then understand that your problem is not going to get better. It is going to get worse. It is going to escalate. It is going to get out of control. It is going to be a problem for you. Yes, it is. Because you're not taking it to the problem solver. You're not taking it to the problem fixer. You're not taking it to the one who created you. You're not taking it to the potter. You're not letting him put you on a wheel and mold you and put you back together. You're not taking it to the one, the only one, which is Jesus Christ himself, the one, the true and the living God. Listen, the one who came and died, he was born, and, and he came, and he died for our sins. God manifested himself in the flesh for you and for me so that we can take our problems and our cares to him. He doesn't want us to hold this stuff. He doesn't want us to bear to carry it. He doesn't want us to, to, to keep it. He doesn't want us to do that. What he says in, in Matthew 11, he says, Come unto me, all ye who are laboring or heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me, upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and and lovely and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Listen, the Bible is full of scriptures talking about us and Jesus wanting to take away our hurts, our pains, our afflictions. Jesus came to just do that. If we look at the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah prophesied about it in Isaiah. He prophesied in Isaiah 61. He prophesied about what Jesus came for. This is what he said in Isaiah. It's in 61. It says the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to the opening of the prison to them that are bound. And then if you go into Luke, my God, if you go into Luke and you read Luke chapter number four and verse number 18, it's the fulfillment of the prophecy of which Isaiah talked about. And this is Jesus talking in the book of Luke. He says, Jesus is saying this, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, captives and recover of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he says this, and, and the crazy if you go down to 21, he says, and he began to say unto them, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. Listen, Jesus 
came to heal the broken. He came to deliver. He came to set free those that are captives and those that are bound. Jesus came to do that for us. And if we don't understand that Jesus is the one that can fix us, Jesus is the one that can heal us, Jesus is the one that can 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 deliver us from whatever we're dealing with, our problems, our situations, our circumstances, our marriages, our families, our children, our whoever. God is the one that can do that. Jesus, he is one. He fulfilled that. And we have to believe that we need to take that to him. We need to truly cast it upon him. Listen, I understand that we're going to deal with trials. We're going to deal with tribulations. We're going to deal with issues. We're going to get upset. We're going to be in our feelings. We're going to have emotional breakdowns. We're going to have emotional fits. We're going to have all kinds of things that's going on. But we need to understand who the author and the finisher of our faith is, which is Jesus Christ himself. We have to understand that it's Jesus. He's the one that's in control. He's the one that's doing it, right? We understand that we look at the book of Psalms that many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them from, from them all. We have to understand that it's Jesus. If we take it to Jesus, we don't have to take it to our friend. We don't have to take it to our mother. We don't have to take it to our sister. We don't have to take it to our husband. We just need to take it to Jesus because Jesus is the one that can heal us. Now understand this woman was immediately healed. She immediately, her, her, her blood immediately dried up, dried up. Immediately it happened. Sometimes we don't get that immediate response. We're not going to get that immediate sometimes. And so I want to encourage you, even if it's not immediate, even if it doesn't happen immediately, then I want you to understand to wait. Wait on God. Wait till you hear him. Wait till he says, this is what you do. Wait till he says, move. Wait till he says, don't move. Wait till he says, stop. Wait. Don't just jump in because you think you know a thing. You better wait on God because it's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual attack. And sometimes we're not looking at things through our spiritual eyes. We're looking at them in our carnal mind, in our fleshly stuff, because we're so busy, worried about pleasing the flesh instead of pleasing God. Listen, the word of God tells us that in the last days that men are going to become lovers of, the, of themselves more than of God, which means that we're going to be starting to battle. Or we're going to be wanting to please this flesh more than we want to please God. Listen, we cannot afford to please God and um, to please our flesh right now, people of God. We, we cannot afford to want to please this flesh more than to please God because understand that time is winding up. And the truth of the matter is, with everything that's going around, we don't know when our judgment is coming. We don't know when our eyes will shut. We don't know when God is going to call us. And so it behoove us to be ready and to not give in to the desires of this flesh. We cannot give in to the desires of this flesh. We cannot keep looking and walking in this flesh and walking naturally and walking in all this stuff and getting ourselves caught up in things that is not of God, getting ourselves caught up in situations and problems that is not of God, getting ourselves taking, uh, uh, allowing ourselves and our minds and our bodies to get us in a situation that is not of God. We have to be mindful and we have to be watchful and we have to understand that we cannot allow the enemy to come in and to distract us. We cannot allow the enemy to come in and to destroy us because that is what the enemy wants to do. He wants to kill, steal, and to destroy you. And understand that if the enemy can isolate you from the people of God, if the enemy can isolate you from the people that are praying and the people that are interceding on your behalf, if the enemy can take you away from the people of God, if the enemy can take you away from where you need to be to get your strength, to grow your strength from, if the people, if the enemy can do that to you, you better be careful and watch. You need to watch what's going on. You need to watch the movements that you're making. You need to watch the people who you're hanging around. You need to watch where you're going. You need to watch how you're doing. You need to watch how you're living. You need to watch how you're carrying yourself because the enemy wants to kill, steal, and to destroy you. And understand, it's a spiritual battle that's happening. We're looking at things and it's so nonchalant. Okay, it's all right. And then No, it's a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual attack that is happening on the church of God today. It's a spiritual attack and the spirit and the spiritual attack is worse I think than the natural because a lot of times because it's spiritual you don't even recognize the spiritual attack that is trying and say I understand because what's happening is see the enemy was mad at me when I preached that message at the end of the uh, uh January and I knew the enemy was going to be mad at me and I didn't care I told y'all the message the enemy was going to be mad and I was going to be coming under attack but listen I don't care I understand 
understand the spiritual of authority that I have. I understand the spirit that is down on the inside of me. And I understand that it's a spiritual battle. See, what the enemy wants to do, even today, the enemy wanted to tell, have me to call Elder Shelton and tell him I cannot pre teach today. That's what he wanted me to do. He wanted me to say, Elder Shelton, I can't teach today. And then I, what happened was when I was going to, when, I, when he dropped that in my head, I was like, oh, yeah, okay. I'm going to call. And then the, the Spirit of God said, no, you're not going to do that. And then I remembered. I said, oh. I remembered, I said, I remember the last time I was doing that. I remember the last time I was like, you know what? I don't want to teach. I don't want to preach. I don't want to do that. And then the Lord, I had to get a whooping because I didn't want to listen to what the Lord was telling me to do. And so then I got chastised and then I ended up having to, to teach like four times in less than a month or something like that. And so I said, oh Lord, you're not going to get me like that again. And so it came back. The spirit of God was able to bring that back to my remembrance. It's like, no girl, you better teach because see the enemy wants you to shut your mouth the enemy wants you to stop talking the enemy wants you to stop telling the people the truth about the living God the people want you to give up the people want you to think that you are not anointing the devil wants you to stop he wants you to quit because he understands that if you continue to open your mouth and you continue to teach the truth which is Jesus Christ then he understands that he has no leg to stand on he has no way that he can take the people of God he has if, and if he does because you allow him to do it and you want him to do it but understand that I'm going to preach and teach the truth whether you like me whether you don't like me I don't care because the truth is what's going to make you free and that's Jesus Christ himself that's Jesus is going to make you free Jesus is going to deliver you Jesus is going to fix the situation. Jesus is going to fix the problem. And you have to be willing to allow Jesus to do it. You have to be willing to give of yourself. You have to give up this flesh. You have to give up your desires. You have to give up who you are in order to truly walk this walk and live it and talk it. I've been praying, God, don't let me just be a hearer of your word, but allow me to be a doer also. God, help me to live what I teach and I preach. And I'm going to tell you, you, it's a struggle every day to do that but I believe that God has a reason he has a purpose and we have to be committed to that whether we have to he has to break us down to nothing whether he has to humble us all the way down or whatever it takes to do we have to trust that God has it all in control we have to trust that everything that God has put before us everything that's going on everything that's happened around us that God is in control God has it in control. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what it feels like. It doesn't matter. God has it in control. And understand that he has the final say. If, God's, if God allows it, then it must have been meant for you to go through it. That's just the bottom line. That's where I am. If God allows it and you allow yourself to get into that situation, then you deal with the consequences. You deal with the hurt. You deal with the pain. But understand that there's a better way. Jesus is that better way. Jesus is it. And all we have to do, I don't even know what time it is. My God. Oh, I didn't even get to my second person. All we have to do is really focus on ourselves. What did he tell the disciples? Come and follow me. Come and follow me. And I know a lot of us think, oh, you know, a lot of people think that scripture thing is a scripture in the Bible. Uh Come as you are, y'all. That ain't in the Bible. That ain't no scripture in the Bible. That's not what it says. But we need to come and follow God. We need to put off and take off and get rid of our stuff and give it to Jesus. I told you we started off with casting all your cares on him. This woman had a problem. She had an issue. Listen, I got issues, y'all. I do. I got issues. I do. I got. I got issues. I have a problem. A lot of times, it's, it's sometimes it's with people. It's it's with people. But just to be honest, it's with people. Uh, because you know they don't listen. We hard headed. I'm hard headed sometimes. Listen, I've been. I told y'all this year. I've been trying to do something new. Walk into this obedience thing. When God tell me to do, I do. And I've been walking in this obedience thing. And it's a struggle. Understand. Um, listen, I'm far from perfect because I still got to get hit sometimes. It's 
a struggle to be obedient. But I understand that it's a spiritual war that is happening. It's a spiritual battle that is happening. And see, the enemy's job, I keep saying this, I don't know why. I don't know. Maybe it's for me. Maybe it's for somebody else. I don't know. But it's the enemy's job to keep us distracted. It's the enemy's job to keep us at, at, uh, at odds against each other. It's the enemy's job to keep us not together. It's the enemy's job to cause division. It's the enemy's job. And so we have to be careful as the people of God to not allow ourselves to get caught up in that. We need to do the will of God. We need to do the will of God. I understand that we're going to have problems. The Bible tells us we're going to have problems, right? Uh, I think it's in uh, 2 Corinthians. It tells us that uh, we are troubled on every hand, right? On every side. We're not, you know, we're not just uh, yet not distressed. We're not perplexed, not despair, right? We all these things. We're not cast down. We're not. But we have problems. We have issues. And, and today I just want you to take them to Jesus. I want you to take him your problem. I want you to take him your dilemma. I want you to take him your anxiety. I want you to take him the hurt. I want you to take him the pain. I want you to take him the issue of life. I want you to take Jesus, everything that is going on, everything that is going wrong, everything that you are concerned about, you are unsure about, you are uncertain about, whatever it is, your anxiety, your stress, your depression, whatever it is, is I want you to take it to Jesus today. Because understand, I can't fix it for you. I can't even try to fix it. Matter of fact, let me put it like this. If I try to fix it, it's probably going to get worse. Because this girl's flesh, me, her, she, her right here, her flesh probably going to rise up, y'all. And it's going to be a whole situation. And so we have to take it to Jesus. He's the one that can heal us. We have to be like this woman with the issue of blood. And say, if I can only touch the hem of his garment. Better yet, if I can only sit in my room on my couch. Let me just make it plain for you. If I can just sit. If I can just stand. If I can just get into the presence of the almighty God. If I can allow the cares of this world to pass and I can just sit and worship God freely, get into a space to where it is only me and Jesus. If I can only get to that place where I can truly get to and it's just me and Jesus and I can have, the song says, if I can have a little talk with Jesus, he will make it all right. Understand that if we can truly get in touch with Jesus and reach the, dr the throne of God and have him touch us and have him saturate us with his love, oh God, and his spirit, I believe that if we can really allow ourselves to truly touch God, I mean, in the place, in the, listen, Touch him, oh God, like you have never touched him before. Touch him to where you get into that place where it doesn't matter who is around you. It doesn't matter what is going on in your life. It doesn't matter if there's a crowd of people, if you're in a crowded room. It doesn't matter if you're in a room by yourself. It doesn't matter if you're in your car. It doesn't matter if you're in the parking lot of the church. It doesn't matter if you're sitting at your kitchen table. But when you're dealing with an issue, when you're dealing with a problem, you need to be able to say, God, I got to get to a place where I need to touch you and I need you to touch me because I can't do this on my own. I can't make this on my work on my own. I'm not going to make it work. I'm probably going to mess it up. I'm going to choose the wrong person to even go to. I'm going to choose the wrong situation. Oh God, I'm going to choose the wrong place to go. I'm going to choose the wrong man. I'm going to choose the wrong woman. I'm going to choose the wrong doctor. I'm going to choose the wrong counselor. I'm going to choose the wrong this. I'm going to choose the wrong school. I'm going to choose just the wrong stuff in my mind. 
mind and in my stuff, I'm going to choose it wrong. But God, if I can get to a place where I'm saturated with your word and you allow your word to minister to me and you allow it to touch me in the places where I'm broken, if you allow it to touch me in the places where I need to be delivered, if you allow it to touch me, God, I will just surrender my whole life and I will say, God, not my will, but thy will be done. I will be able to get to that place and I will be able to touch you. Listen, we have to get serious about this with God. Y'all need to understand that this is not a play pretty. This is not something that we are playing with. I'm not playing with salvation. My salvation is real to me. My salvation is, is the most important thing to me right now because I want to make it into heaven. When the Lord comes, I want to hear him say, well done, thy good and thy faithful servant. I don't have time to play with people about whether they believe Jesus is God or not. Listen, either you're going to believe Jesus is God or you're not. I don't need to worry about whether you're going to say you want to get baptized and titled with Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's on you. But what I need to understand is that I need Jesus for myself. And so therefore, I'm going to get in the word of God. I'm going to read the word of God. And I'm going to understand what God has promised me. I'm going to understand that if I abide in him and, and, his, and his will, then he will give me, oh God, what I ask. I believe that whatever it is his will, if I ask, he will do it. But that's the problem. We want to ask God to give stuff and it ain't in his will. We want to do it because we want to do it. Because we like it, we love it, we want to do it. Listen, that's not going to get you but a one-way ticket to where you don't want to be. And then you're going to be crying out to the Lord, crying, 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 saying, Lord, help me. Not saying that he won't, he will. But understand, why put yourself in a situation where you got to cry out to him if you seek him and ask him? If you seek him first and everything that you need, if you seek him and ask him first before you move, if you seek him and ask him, I'm going to tell you he would do it. Understand, I had to tell my kids the other day, they was like, do you pray all the time? Yes, I do. When I walk in the store, before I walk in the store, I sit in my car and I say, Lord, order my steps. God, when I walk into the store, God, Lord, I ask that you would be my guide. Watch my eyes. Watch me. Watch my hands. Oh, God, don't let me pick up anything that I don't need. Don't let me spend too much money. God, don't let me do this. And I'm going to tell you, when you begin to live and breathe and walk this thing, you will not get caught up in stuff. Listen, not to say that I don't get caught up. I can, but I understand and I come back to understand that Jesus is it. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. Without him, listen, we're not going to make it. Without Jesus, it's not going to work. We need Jesus. We need the Holy Ghost. We need the Spirit of God on the inside of us to help us to say no. We need the Spirit of God on the inside of us to help us to say, God, I need help. Listen, it's nothing wrong with saying I need help. God, I can't do this. God is too much. God has got too much going on. God, I got too much in my mind. I got too much in my head. God, I got just too much going on. And sometimes I feel like I just can't take it. You need to call Jesus and you need to get there and stay in that vein and stay in that place until you get him, until he touch you, until he give you what you need. You need to just call him until he answer. And he, the word of God says that he will answer. If you call him, he will answer. The word of God says, but you have to know the word of God in order to be able to speak it back to him because his word is what moves him. His word is what moves the situation. His word. Listen, y'all. Oh, y'all, I'm not playing with this thing because see, Jesus is, I'm serious about who Jesus is. For Jesus, it says, for God I live and for God I die. Y'all better understand that Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the way. He is the only way. There is no one else but Jesus. You can't call on me. You can't call on my mama. I can't call on my daddy. I only can call on Jesus because understand your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, they will turn their back on you, but understand that Jesus won't. Jesus will never leave you. Jesus will never forsake you. Jesus will be with you always. Jesus will be there. When the people leave you, Jesus is still there. When everybody walk away, Jesus is still there. Y'all better understand that it's Jesus all day, Jesus all night, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You better call him like never before because he's the only one that can help you. He's the only one that can fix you. He is the only one. Jesus. I need him. I don't know if you need him. I didn't even get to the other person. I maybe sit on her another time. Jesus. We need him. I need him. I don't know if y'all need him, but I do. I wouldn't be where I am without him. I have been through some stuff. Some heartaches, some pains, some issues for people, whether they uh, knowing or unknowingly hurt your feelings or not, whether they do it on purpose, whether the enemy tries to come 
and do things blatantly in your face and think you don't see where the enemy tries to discourage you when the enemy tries to use your own family whether it be your husband whether it be your wife whether it be your children whether it be your siblings the enemy will do all of that and he will use anybody who is willing to get you off and I have learned recently I know y'all heard me say I was tired of the enemy I'm tired of the enemy I, mean, I know I, I, I am tired of the enemy and I refuse to allow him to sit in my presence tired I refuse to allow the enemy to tap any more of my life than he has already taken. Therefore, I live and walk Jesus. I live and walk in the spiritual authority in which he has given me. And I challenge you to walk in the authority that God has given you. Don't cower down. Stand. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord. Don't allow the enemy to take your joy, your peace. Don't allow the enemy to take your anointing or your word. You have to stand on the word of God. And it doesn't matter whether people like it or not. Listen, I'm not trying to please you. I want to please God. And if you want to please God, then we'll be on the same page. But the minute you don't want to please God and you want to please yourself, then guess what? Goodbye. I don't have time. Because it's about God. It's about Jesus. It's about my salvation. It's about my peace. It's about me being able to do what God has called me to do. Without distraction. Without distraction. And so today I ask you to go to Jesus. Cast your cares on him because he cares for you. He cares. He wouldn't have went to Calvary's cross for our sins if he did not. He doesn't want us to sin. He doesn't want us to be in bondage. He doesn't want us to be broken. He doesn't want us to be in a bad state. He wants us to live for him. He wants us to be able to and be okay he wants us to be able to to deal with the pain and the ridicule and the hurts and the things of that and still be okay that's a hard pill to swallow I understand because I do people do me wrong and they don't come apologize it takes me a minute to get over it I don't get over it though but you know you wrong but I'll get over it with the help of the Lord and I keep praying and fasting and asking God to kill this flesh I got to ask him to kill it. Y'all understand? I do. I got to ask him to kill it. Because if I don't, Lord Jesus. See, I don't want to be like the other person. I want, I want Jesus to see me and say, well done. And so therefore, I got to crucify this flesh. And so some things I have to get it right. Some things I got to get myself and my mind wrapped around. And I got to sit here and I got to call on Jesus myself. Listen, I got to call on him. And I've been calling on Jesus. I've been getting up and I've been early in the morning and I've been calling Jesus. I've been crying out to him and I've been crying out to him for, for a while. And I'm like, I'm interceding and I'm doing what God has called me to do. And I understand the more that I do, the worse it's going to get for me. But it's okay because as long as I continue to pray and as long as I continue to intercede, I believe the Lord is going to give me the strength to endure. The Lord will give me the strength to make it. The Lord will give me what I need. So y'all come to Jesus. Give him everything you have. Let me pray because we have prayer. So let me pray really quick because I only got a few minutes.
Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this Bible study, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. God, we're asking that you would help us, O oh God, to cast our problems on you on today. God, our issues, our anxiety, our whatever it is that our issue is, whatever our problem is, whatever is distracting us, whatever is discouraging, whatever is going on in our minds, God, I'm asking right now in the name of Jesus that you would just come in and touch us, O oh God. Help us to get into that place to where we're calling you until we touch you, until we reach you, until the situation changes. God, help us to get into that prayer closet, oh God, and help us to truly cry out to you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Cry out like never before, oh God. Cry, oh God, until you answer. Cry until you change the situation. Cry until you hear us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And God, we're going to give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise, oh God. Keep us, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you and we magnify you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, people of God. I pray, oh God, that you have, take Jesus with you. Call him in the midnight hour. Call him. Join us for prayer Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. sharply. The number is 1-720-650-3030. The pin number is 315-2114-POUND. Again, that's 1-720-650-3030. The pin number is 315-2114-POUND. God bless you, people of God. I pray that God be with you. I pray that you stand on his word and nothing else. Do not waver. Do not do not stray. Do not lose sight on God today because you might not make it back again. God bless you. Love you.